Hello, this is Scott from Optics Realm. This is Zmax tutorial number seven. Today I'm going to show you how to locate the cardinal points in an optical system using Zmax. Now, if you want more background information on what cardinal points and principal planes and nodal points are, I have another optics tutorial. I'll try and provide links somewhere in this video screen using YouTube's tools to get you there. Today I just want to show you how to get that stuff in ZMAX. Not that one would often want that, but I just want to show you where it is, how to start investigating and thinking about principal planes because it's a, it's a very important concept in optics. I'm going to use, and I'm going to record straight through all my mistakes as you just saw, all my guffaws, and try and talk through all the shortcut keys and hotkeys I'm using. We're going to use a sample lens file. So my documents is going to, sh uh, when you install ZMAX, ZMAX is going to have a subdirectory under my documents. This isn't where the program is, but all the supporting files that go with it, like glass catalogs, macros. It also includes this sample subdirectory that has a bunch of sample lenses for starting points on lenses or to see how things are modeled. We're going to go into sequential objectives and I like this 28 degree let's do, let's do something different now let's do the double gauss 28 degree bunch of things here I don't really care about RMS versus field matrix spot diagrams don't care about comment I don't care about the comment column let's just kinda of clean this up I don't care about conics clean up our user interface help in the recording process as well here's our lens layout I'm going to insert a dummy surface out here to show the rays coming in so we can see our rays coming into the, the optical system. So I'm going to go to surface one, highlight surface one, and just hit, hit the insert button. Or you could go to edit, insert surface, and this shows you all the hotkeys here. Now that we have this, let's put, I don't know, five millimeters. So now that this is here, if I double click, I'm not drawing that. Well, this window is drawn from surface 2 to surface 13. And you can see that if you do a right click or you go to the settings. First surface, surface 2 to 13. Let's go to surface 1. And you can see now we have rays coming into our lens. I'm going to get rid of this surface here. Just kind of clouds it. Come to standard, double click standard. The draw, we're going to highlight. Do not draw the surface click OK and then I have to update double click or hit the update button. Here's our optical system. There are a couple ways to find the the cardinal points in an, in an optical system. The easiest, well the first way is under reports prescription data. This gives you a window of a bunch of relevant information for this particular prescription. So for instance radius and thickness just like you get in the lens data editor. I also happen to have index data. If you go to settings or I like to just right click, I'm going to get rid of index. We're going to turn on cardinal points. And you can see oh, there's a bunch of wavelengths here. So for 486, you've got object space and image space. I don't really care about all these wavelengths. I'm going to change the wavelengths. I could either hit this wave button or control W, get rid of, surf of wavelength 1. Wavelength 2 in this case. Now we're just at 587. Click OK. Double click to update. Focal length, focal planes, principal planes. We've got all the data we want here for the system's cardinal points. But there's another way to find it in case, another way to get cardinal points, and it's more generic. It allows you to get on particular lenses or lens groupings. Go to analysis, uh, not miss, miscellaneous calculations, cardinal points. So it looks very similar, but now it's saying we're referencing from surface one. Object space is referenced from surface one. And remember, we added this five millimeter air gap here, so that's changing what we're seeing here. And we're, and we're, going, we're referencing image space from surface 13, the image. Now, if you want to get rid of this, you can just right click and go to surface two, and all these will change by five millimeters. Let's find the back principal plane. Back principal plane, 
as reference, the image, image principal plane relative to surface 13. So from this surface right here, it is saying minus 99 millimeters. Now to show you where that is, I'm going to insert a couple dummy surfaces. I highlight the last surface image, I hit insert, insert, I've got to do two image planes. We're going to, going to come to this thickness, we're going to say minus 99.317248. More significant figures than we need, but that's okay. So here's our surface. Now this lens is messed up because the last surface is here. If I hit a, like a spot diagram, not MTF spot diagram, these spots are huge. We're talking, you know, on the order of meters. Meters? Oh, this is microns, millimeters, tens of millimeters. <laughs> well, we want to go back to the image plane, so I'm going to come forward. So at this plane, that's the surface 13, this is surface 13 here. Now I want to come back to the image plane. Instead of typing that again, I'm, I'm going to put a solve in. I could either hit enter from here or double click. Double click. Uh, we're going to select pick up. Pick up. This is surface 14. We want to pick up the surface from 13. And we want a scale factor of minus 1. Now we're back to our image plane. And to prove it, we go to our spots. We've got our nice spots again. But the lens layout is sort of a mess. What, what is going on here? We've got some virtual rays that are confusing the issue. But let's just trace them to make sure we understand what's going on. Let's take this top marginal ray, this blue ray right here. We trace it through the, the optical system. It gets to the edge of the aperture stop. Actually, does it? See, it's not quite getting to the edge of the ap aperture stop. And that's because there's pupil aberrations. This probably, and could prove me wrong, this probably does not have um, ray aiming on. So I'll hit Control G, or you could hit the general, and it's not. Paraxial, OK. And when I double click this and update, you'll see our marginal ray will go through the edge of the stop. There we go. Control End. So we trace this marginal ray through, goes through the edge of the aperture stop, through the back optics, and then focuses down. But we have two dummy surfaces. We come back, we go backwards through these lenses. It's not tracing through these lenses. This is a virtual ray back here. And then we come forward again to the image plane. I want to get rid of these virtual rays. I'm going to show you how to do that. Come to surface 13. I'm going to double click, hide rays to this surface, and skip rays to this surface. Well, then I got to do the next one as well. So we, we, we got rid of the rays that went from here to here. Now I've got to get rid of the rays that go from here to here. Uh, skip rays, hide rays, two, skip rays. I'm just going to do both. OK, so that got rid of them. We're back to a normal looking lens. Now, now to prove to ourselves this is indeed the back principal plane, we're going to copy this image and take it to some drawing program and do the real ray traces. I like to use PowerPoint because it's simple, it's easy to use. So I do control C. Well, first I make sure this window is highlighted. Control C, or you can go window, copy to clipboard. I'm going to go to PowerPoint. Control V, paste it. It's huge. Let's give it a height of, I don't know, six. And of course it's outside the field. So control uh, trackball on the mouse changes magnification. Okay, so there's our lens. I'm going to draw this back marginal ray. We're going to start right at the image and go right to here. Oh, man, I've got grids on. Sorry, I've got to turn grids off. Grids and guides, snap object to grids. Okay. So we'll put this point on the image and this point the back marginal ray height. I think that does it. Now we're going to backwards ray trace, graphically backwards ray trace. I'm going to hold the shift key down and grab this. And you can see the slope of this, this line isn't changing, but I can do that virtual ray trace there. Change the color. We'll go purple. We don't have purple yet. Let's make it really thick so it stands out. Three point. 
let's do this marginal ray here on the input. Let's get it right there. Okay. Let's change the shape. Also weight three point. And now if I draw this forward, it should intersect at that plane. And you can see it, it pretty much does. So it looks like that really is indeed the back principal plane. Okay, what if we want to do it on an individual lens? Let's pick just this lens, this back lens here. I'm going to get rid of these two because we don't care anymore. Double click. Those are gone. Ah, I didn't need to delete those. I should have kept them. Insert, insert. We'll just repeat it again. You can see it. Get a, a second, second look at how I did that. Now we want to update our cardinal points. And to get just this lens, we're going to go from surface 11 to surface 12. I right-click, get the settings, surface 11 to surface 12. Surface 12, that's right. Second-guess myself. So the image space, let's do the front one. Let's do the front principal plane, just for something different. So the front principal plane from surface 11 is 3 millimeters. Is that right? 13 to 14. Oh, it's positive. That's right. So 3 millimeters. We're going to come and say 3.185847. Again, I'm going to do a pickup. I hit enter. I hit P to jump to pickup from surface 11, tab to the next entry minus one for scale factor. And again, now we're seeing all this nastiness here. I'm going to get rid of uh, hide rays, skip rays, next surface, hide rays, skip rays, okay. So the rays aren't nutty, crazy, but we can see um, the extra dummy, dummy surfaces. So we don't want this dummy surface. We're going to hide, do not draw this surface. And now you can see the front principal plane for this lens. Let's highlight it. Actually, let's do this. Let's go from surface 11. Now let's get rid of the rays. So now you can see this, this lens here. Surf, there's th surface 13. There's surface 14. There's the principal plane. It's 3.186 millimeters from this front vertex. So this is a simple way in case you want to understand cardinal points, measure cardinal points, or if you're doing some homework on theoretical cardinal points and you want to check your work, you can now do this in ZMAX. Hope this was helpful. I know we don't do a lot of cardinal points very often as when you do lens design, but cardinal points are so important, and I wanted to show the power and flexibility of ZMAX and how to do this, these sorts of calculations. And that's it. If you need to get a hold of me, you can uh, email me at scott.sparrow at gmail.com. I'm on YouTube. Please, if you have comments, leave them down below. And my website, opticsrealm.com. Thanks for tuning in.